Hi everyone, my name is Guillermo. I'm one of the social workers from the Grand River Community Health Center. I'm making a video today hoping to provide you with some resources and some information about some um, maybe mental health information or resources um, that you could use um, during this time right now. As you can see, I'm as well in my home, um, kind of accommodating to some of the, the changes that we all are. And I'm coming to you from my home, hopefully to talk to you a little bit about more about how we can manage and kind of deal with kind of some of the uncertainty of our current times and maybe how that's impacting us emotionally, physically, uh, psychologically. And um, hopefully some of what I give you in this video will help today. Um, I'm hoping to focus more, a little bit more on anxiety today. Um, and maybe some of the impact that, that might be playing in, um, especially with what's currently going on. I'm hoping to do that in a few different ways. Um, maybe you're somebody who's been, um, you know, kind of exposed to some of the current information of what's going on. Um, and so maybe that's causing some concern for you. Maybe historically you have um, some anxiety. And so maybe that's something that you're wanting some more information on. And so my hope is maybe to cover a few different spectrums as to maybe this is something, a new sensation or feeling for you, or maybe this is something you've been working through for a long time and you would just like some resources as to how to improve your mental health or how to improve anybody's current mental health right now. Um, for those of you that haven't met me yet, I uh, do run some of the groups at our Grand River Community Health Center, our anxiety groups and our depression groups. Um, and I as well do individual counseling. Um, and I've been doing that for about four years. So my hope is maybe to bring a little bit of that knowledge into today's video um, to talk a little bit more about anxiety and what that looks like. Um, I am gonna refer to some of my notes, so I do apologize if I don't make eye contact all the time, but I'm gonna do my best to do that. Um, so maybe to start off, um, anxiety can mean a lot of many different things for many different people. Um, so, you know, we can classify it as definitely a sensation. Um, and so typically, you know, our, maybe the body heat's rising, might become a little warm. We notice maybe uh, our heart rate increase a little bit. Um, maybe we become a little bit sweaty or clammy. That's definitely something that we can relate to anxiety. Some people use anxiety to describe a feeling or a sensation of uneasiness or queasiness. Um, and even a lot of people don't know, but sometimes we use anxiety interchangeably when we're scared. Um, it's, it's kind of that something of the unknown There's, that's causing something of our anxiety. And so anxiety at the core, we usually are talking about anxiety um, to kind of encompass all these different sensations. We're usually talking about them from a physiological standpoint and a psychological standpoint. So the physiological standpoint is a little bit of what I just talked about, those body sensations, those cues that are happening um, that we notice. And the psychological though, are some of those kind of underlying thought processes that are maybe, um, that we're processing as some of this is going on. Um, so maybe we're thinking about um, certain experiences, maybe we're thinking about, um, you know, certain thoughts, maybe we're kind of brought back to specific spaces. And so that can, can kind of perpetuate a little bit of those sensations too. And so what's happening typically when we have anxiety um, is that those two um, experiences, both our body experiences and our mind experiences are working together um, for better or for worse. Um, and they're creating some kind of output that we are interpreting and now we're kind of reacting to. Um, and so sometimes either or can maybe trigger something and cause a reaction. So maybe, you know, there might be an emotional reaction or a psychological reaction um, and that causes my body sensation to kind of take on kind of all those elements that I talked about. Or sometimes it's vice versa. You know, maybe there's something out in that I'm sensing and that I'm perceiving and then um, that's maybe causing and triggering some of these maybe unwarranted thoughts that maybe I'm relating to about maybe a sp specific past experience. Regardless, they, they work together. And so that's maybe some of the key things that maybe we can take away from today. And the good news with that is that if we learn to maybe challenge some of the physiological and the psychological, we can maybe gain um, some sense of balance or equilibrium in how to respond or react in a situation. And so maybe historically, I can provide some more context for you about anxiety is that um, anxiety is actually um, has been there since the beginning. So anxiety is a very humanistic, normal experience. 
I experience anxiety, I'm experiencing it right now, as I'm doing this video, you just might not be able to tell, um, or maybe you can, but I, I feel that and I sense that it's just maybe not as overt. And obviously this is kind of where we, we classify and we talk about there's thresholds that people experience anxiety in very different things for di very different reasons, and some of us respond differently. Um, but coming back to kind of that anxiety is that uh, the reason I talk about this kind of historical sense of anxiety is that a lot of people, um, depending on where you are, again, on that spectrum, maybe you're kind of just experiencing anxiety now for the first time, or maybe you've been dealing with this for a while, um, obviously we know that the sensations aren't as pleasant as we'd like them to be. And so a lot of the patients that I meet with or clients, they come in and they say, you know, I really want to deal with my anxiety. Can you please help me um, get rid of this? And so something that I tell them is that historically, anxiety has always been is a human sensation. It's actually a human cue that has existed for a long period of time. And it's actually both helpful and can be unhelpful. Um, so there's some research saying, you know, there's students who they say, if you're a student and you experience too much anxiety, that might cause you to not do well on a test or perform well on a test because you're too nervous to do well. Um, on the same token, if you don't have enough anxiety, you probably won't prompt yourself to study for the test. So research might say that there's kind of this sweet spot of anxiety um, that you, know, you can be prompted enough to study, but not so much that you become overwhelmed. And so all to say when I'm talking about the historical aspect of anxiety is that there is a function and a purpose to our anxiety. And the anxiety at the core is really to set up cues about something that is concerning. And so when I talk about the historical piece, um, if you think about times that we were uh, more engaged with elements um, of the world, whether it be um, the weather, whether it be kind of nature in itself, um, you know, there's probably times where our bodies would help us cue the information of what's happening. So, you know, we see a bear and kind of essentially our body is cueing us that there is something odd about the situation and in some sense is triggering some kind of, um, again, physiological response, typically adrenaline, um, to kind of deal and cope with the situation. And so kind of nowadays, obviously, we don't kind of run in maybe perhaps into situations that require that element, but that still happens. And so really the historical aspect of anxiety is a cued response to some kind of unknown or sometimes some kind of concern that our body or our minds are perceiving. And this is kind of where we kind of have to challenge ourselves a bit because this is kind of where um, we see kind of people respond in two different ways to a similar situation. And in some ways, some of this is learned um, since when we were little, and some of it is reconstructed, and some of it perhaps is kind of shadowed by some past experiences that we've dealt with. And so when we're kind of presented with some of the information all over again, we feel like we're right back there, even though perhaps the situation might be different, but it still feels real nonetheless. Um, and so kind of maybe talking a, bit, a little bit more about that is that we, we have to recognize that there's different thresholds that we all have in the context of anxiety. Um, and when I talked about uh, this kind of starting when we're little, maybe an example that I give is that perhaps you've seen kids when they fall, and some fall on the grass, some fall at the park, some fall wherever. Hopefully um, they're not falling all the time, but this is part of kind of life and, and how we grow up to walk, is that sometimes we do fall. And so kind of I'm using the analogy that sometimes we do fall. And so you'll notice that as kind of kids develop, some kids, the first time they fall, they cry immediately. Parents come, pick them up, soothe them, and on their way they go. Some kids, as they're growing, they fall multiple times um, on the grass, and you'll notice that they're kind of looking back to kind of take this cue on. And so sometimes what parents do is that they kind of use this opportunity, either maybe the first time to know, I'm here for you, I'm going to pick you up, you know, if you're really injured, I want to make sure that I'm here for you. Um, but at the same time, token, what they might say is like, you know what? You, Billy, you just fell again. Um, it's okay. You can get back up, you know, brush your knees off and continue to go on. And so what happens over time for kids, and this is so unique, is that what they're measuring when they fall now is the sensation of the experience of falling, which might be, you know, pain, a little bit of hurt, depending on where they fall. At the same time, kind of with this other thought of looking at back at their parents and saying, you know, are they going to respond to this? Or is this kind of like a serious threat that I should be crying to? And so they're kind of gauging these two cues about the sensation of kind of what they're feeling along with the kind of maybe reaction that they think they, that, that might warrant the situation. 
And so this is kind of a little bit of kind of the unique dilemma that maybe when we're learning to work through our anxiety that we're faced with. Um, and it's kind of a learned skill. So there's a lot of portions of anxiety that actually can be addressed through learn and through practice. The problem is, of course, when usually we're typically anxious, there's usually three ways that we, we say that we typically respond when we're in full on blow to kind of some, some, something is very anxious and causing some anxiety. And so one, either we uh, become, um, we kind of take this like fight response in which we're like absorbing everything in and we're just ready to go and run things with crazy. There's this fight response that we want to avoid completely like everything that we're experiencing. Or, you know, um, unfortunately, maybe we can become overwhelmed and gripped with fear that we, you know, we kind of curl up or kind of we just sit there and we do nothing. Um, and these are kind of then where we try to kind of reconfigure some of the thresholds that we have, uh, you know, and obviously each threshold is different. I'm not saying how people should react to different things, um, but this is, again, is a learned skill. So if we can learn how to maybe, um, you know, tip the balance to our favor in how maybe we should experience some of the anxiety, that might help. And that's kind of their specific skills and things that we can do uh, to work on that. So that's 